Hello from American Losses today, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Joseph Paul Schmidt, January 18, 1932 to September 11, 2024, was a legendary linebacker for the Detroit Lions, playing 13 remarkable seasons from 1953 to 1965. A key figure in the team's history, Schmidt helped lead the Lions to two NFL championships in 1953 and 1957. His dominant presence on the field earned him 10 consecutive Pro Bowl selections from 1954 to 1963, and he was twice named the NFL's most valuable defensive player, in 1960 and 1963. Recognized for his excellence, he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1973. After retiring as a player, Schmidt transitioned to coaching, serving as the Lions head coach from 1967 to 1972. Under his leadership, the team compiled a respectable 43-34-7 record. Born in Pittsburgh, Schmidt played college football at the University of Pittsburgh, where he earned All-American honors in 1952. In 2000, he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Schmidt's early life was marked by personal tragedy, but his resilience led him to a storied football career that continues to inspire generations. James Earl Jones, January 17, 1931 to September 9, 2024, was an iconic American actor known for his deep, resonant voice and commanding presence on stage and screen. One of the rare performers to achieve EGOT status, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, Jones gained international fame for voicing Darth Vader in Star Wars and delivering standout performances in films like The Great White Hope, 1968, Field of Dreams, 1989, and The Lion King, 1994. Born in Mississippi, he overcame a childhood stutter through poetry and acting, later serving in the U.S. Army during the Korean War. Jones won two Tony Awards, for The Great White Hope and Fences, along with two Primetime Emmys. His career also included acclaimed roles in Dr. Strangelove, 1964, Coming to America, 1988, and numerous Shakespearean productions. Jones' remarkable contributions to the arts earned him honors like the National Medal of Arts and an Academy Honorary Award, leaving behind a legacy of excellence that spanned over six decades. Wayne Leon Graham, April 6, 1936 to September 3, 2024, was an esteemed American baseball coach best known for leading the Rice Owls to a College World Series championship. Prior to his celebrated coaching career, Graham played in Major League Baseball, MLB, for the Philadelphia Phillies and New York Mets. A Houston native, he first made waves by winning a Texas state championship with Reagan High School in 1952. He played college baseball at the University of Texas before leaving to support his family and pursue professional baseball. Signed by the Phillies in 1957, Graham spent 11 years in pro baseball, earning Texas Minor League Player of the Year honors in 1962. Though his MLB playing career was brief, featuring stints with the Phillies in 1963 and the Mets in 1964, Graham left an indelible mark as a coach. In addition to his College World Series victory, he led five NJCA World Series championship teams. His legacy endures as one of the most respected figures in college baseball, guiding the Rice Owls to national prominence. James William Ercolini, June 8, 1936 to September 2, 2024, known professionally as James Darren, was an American actor, singer, and television director. Rising to fame in the late 1950s, Darren became a teen idol with his role in Gidget, 1959, and its sequels. He starred in films like The Gene Krupa Story, 1959, The Guns of Navarone, 1961, and Diamond Head, 1962. In addition to acting, Darren enjoyed a successful music career, with his 1961 hit Goodbye Cruel World cementing his status. He later transitioned to television, starring in The Time Tunnel, 1966-1967, and playing Officer James Corrigan in T.J. Hooker, 
1982 to 1986. Darren was born in Philadelphia and grew up in a close-knit Italian neighborhood that also produced stars like Fabian and Frankie Avalon. He studied acting under Stella Adler in New York City, honing his craft before achieving widespread recognition. Darren's multifaceted career spanned decades, including a memorable role as Vic Fontaine in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, 1998-1999. His legacy endures as a beloved figure in both film and television, Isaac Freeman III, August 6, 1968 to August 30, 2024, better known as Fatman Scoop, was an influential American rapper, hype man, and radio personality. Renowned for his powerful voice, he gained prominence with his 1999 hit single Be Faithful featuring the Crooklyn Clan, which topped the UK singles chart in 2003. His energetic contributions were also notable on tracks like Missy Elliott's Loose Control and Mariah Carey's It's Like That. Fatman Scoop's career extended beyond music into television, where he appeared on MTV's Man and Wife and had roles on The Boondocks. He also participated in Celebrity Big Brother 16 in 2015, finishing in 11th place. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he shifted focus to new ventures, including trucking and an ice cream business. On August 30, 2024, he released two final collaborations, Our House with Bingo Players and Disco Fries, and let it go with Dice Peso, continuing to make an impact in the music industry. John Michael Gaudreau, August 13, 1993, to August 29, 2024, was an acclaimed NHL winger known for his remarkable skill and sportsmanship. After a standout college career at Boston College, where he won the Hobie Baker Award in 2014, Gaudreau was drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2011. He quickly made a name for himself in the NHL, earning a spot in the 2015 All-Star Game and receiving the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy in 2017 for his gentlemanly play. Gaudreau signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets in 2022, contributing significantly over two seasons. Sadly, on August 29, 2024, he and his younger brother Matthew were tragically killed in a cycling accident caused by an alleged drunk driver in Oldman's Township, New Jersey. Born in Salem, New Jersey, Gaudreau grew up in Carney's Point Township and attended Gloucester Catholic High School before graduating from Dubuque Senior High School. His legacy is remembered both on and off the ice for his exceptional talent and sportsmanship. Sidney Raymond Udy, December 16, 1960 to August 26, 2024, was a renowned American professional wrestler, famously known under the ring names Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, and Psycho Sid. His career spanned both the World Wrestling Federation, WWF, and World Championship Wrestling, WCW, where he won six world championships, including two WWF championships and two WCW World Heavyweight Championships. Udy's career highlights included headlining major events like WrestleMania 8, WrestleMania 13, and Starcade 2000. Starting in Continental Championship Wrestling, CCW, as Lord Humongous, he gained prominence with his intimidating persona. Udy also had a stint in New Japan Pro Wrestling, in JPW, and briefly competed in World Class Championship Wrestling, WCCW, where he adopted the memorable ring name Sid Vicious. His impact on the wrestling world remains significant, remembered for his formidable presence and championship successes. Russell Lamar Malone, November 8, 1963 to August 23, 2024, was a distinguished American jazz guitarist known for his work with notable artists like Jimmy Smith, Harry Connick Jr., and Diana Krall. Born in Albany, Georgia, Malone began playing guitar at the age of four, inspired by legends such as B.B. King and the Dixie Hummingbirds. His career took off in 1988 with Smith and continued to flourish through collaborations with Connick and Crawl. Malone played on Grammy-nominated albums, including Crawl's When I Look in Your Eyes, which won Best Vocal Jazz Performance. He also recorded with Benny Green and performed with jazz icons like Ron Carter, Roy Hargrove, and Diane Reeves. Malone led his own trio and quartet, recording notable albums such as Live at Jazz Standard and Triple Play. His contributions to jazz were celebrated until his passing from a heart attack in Tokyo on August 23, 2024, while on tour with Carter and Donald Vega. William James Pascrell Jr., January 25, 1937 to August 21, 2024, was a dedicated American politician who served as a U.S. representative from New Jersey for nearly three decades. 
A member of the Democratic Party, Pascrell was born in Patterson, New Jersey, and began his political career in the New Jersey General Assembly, where he served four terms starting in 1988. He also held two terms as mayor of Patterson before his election to Congress. Elected to the House of Representatives in 1996, Pascrell initially represented New Jersey's 8th Congressional District. After the district's redistricting in 2012, he successfully ran for the 9th Congressional District, defeating incumbent Steve Rothman. He continued to represent the 9th District until his passing. A grandson of Italian immigrants, Pascal was a former high school teacher and professor, and he contributed significantly to education through his roles on various educational boards. He died on August 21, 2024, leaving a legacy of public service and dedication. Alvin Austin Adels Jr., November 7, 1936 to August 20, 2024, was a distinguished American basketball player, coach, and executive whose entire career was dedicated to the Golden State Warriors. Known by his nickname, Destroyer, Adels played the point guard position and was drafted by the Warriors in 1960. He spent 11 seasons with the team, making the transition with them from Philadelphia to the San Francisco Bay Area in 1962. Adels became player coach in the 1970-71 season, his final year as a player, and led the Warriors to an NBA championship in 1975 as head coach. Adels continued his association with the Warriors in various roles, including general manager and team ambassador, until his passing. His number 16 was retired by the Warriors in 1977, and he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2019. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Adels was a graduate of North Carolina A&T State University and initially planned to coach locally before joining the Warriors. Philip John Donahue, December 21, 1935 to August 18, 2024, was a trailblazing American media personality and creator of The Phil Donahue Show. Premiering in 1967, the show was the first major talk program to feature live audience participation, a format that transformed daytime television. Known for addressing controversial issues such as civil rights, consumer protection, and political debates, Donahue's show became a platform for national conversation and was influential in shaping public discourse. Donahue's career spanned nearly three decades, with his show running until 1996. His innovative approach earned him a prominent place in television history and inspired subsequent talk show hosts, including Oprah Winfrey. Besides his landmark show, Donahue briefly hosted a talk show on MSNBC from 2002 to 2003. Born in Cleveland, Ohio, Donahue graduated from the University of Notre Dame and began his career in television, leaving behind a significant legacy in media. Ralph Pierre Lackick March 30, 1926 to August 15, 2024, professionally known as Peter Marshall, was a distinguished American game show host, television and radio personality, singer, and actor. Best known for hosting the Hollywood Squares from 1966 to 1981, Marshall's engaging style and what made the show a television staple for 15 years. His career included nearly 50 television, movie, and Broadway credits, showcasing his versatility and charm. Born in Clarksburg, West Virginia, Marshall faced early challenges, including the loss of his father when he was just 10. Moving to New York City with his mother, he pursued a career in entertainment, initially as a disc jockey while serving in the U.S. Army. Adopting his stage name, which was suggested by John Robert Powers, Marshall carved out a significant place in the entertainment industry. His elder sister, Joanne Drew, also achieved fame as an actress, further enriching their family's legacy in show business. Virginia Catherine Gina Rollins, June 19, 1930 to August 14, 2024, was a celebrated American actress whose illustrious career spanned nearly seven decades. Renowned for her performances in film, stage, and television, Rollins won four Emmys and two Golden Globes. Her work with director and husband John Cassavetes in films such as A Woman Under the Influence, 1974, and Gloria, 1980, earned her Academy Award nominations for Best Actress. She also received the Silver Bear for Best Actress for Opening Night, 1977. Born in Madison, Wisconsin, Rollins was the daughter of Mary Allen, an actress known as Lady Rollins, and Edwin Myrwyn Rollins, a banker and state legislator. The family relocated several times due to Edwin's career, 
eventually settling in Minneapolis. Rollins attended the University of Wisconsin from 1947 to 1950, before moving to New York City to study drama at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Her remarkable talent and distinctive performances left a lasting legacy in the world of cinema. Gregory Stanley Kinn, July 10, 1949 to August 13, 2024, was a distinguished American rock musician, radio personality, and novelist. He is best remembered as the leader of the Greg Kinn Band, with iconic tracks such as The Breakup Song, They Don't Write M, from 1981 and Jeopardy from 1983. Kin's career was deeply influenced by the Beatles' groundbreaking performance on The Ed Sullivan Show in 1964, an event he described as life-changing and pivotal in his decision to pursue music. Kin began his musical journey in Baltimore, where he started as a singer-songwriter. His move to San Francisco in 1974 marked a shift towards a more straightforward rock and roll style. During his high school years, Kin won a local talent contest that included a typewriter, records, and a Vox electric guitar, items that played a significant role in shaping his musical career. In addition to his success in music, Kin made notable contributions as a novelist. His influence spans across both rock music and literature, leaving a lasting impact on both fields. Wallace Amos Jr., July 1, 1936 to August 13, 2024, was a renowned American television personality, businessman, and author best known for founding the famous Amos chocolate chip cookie brand. His journey began in Tallahassee, Florida, where he was born, to Wallace and Ruby Amos. After his parents' divorce, he moved to New York City with his aunt and enrolled at Food Trades Vocational High School, where his passion for cooking was nurtured. It was his Aunt Della Bryant's homemade cookies that inspired him to create his iconic chocolate chip cookie recipe. Amos dropped out of high school to join the United States Air Force, serving at Hickam Air Force Base in Honolulu, Hawaii, from 1954 to 1957. During his service, he earned his high school equivalency diploma and was honorably discharged. Beyond his cookie empire, Amos also hosted the adult reading program Learn to Read, demonstrating his commitment to literacy and education. His legacy is marked by his entrepreneurial spirit and dedication to helping others through both his business and educational endeavors. Richard Alatori, May 15, 1943 to August 13, 2024, was a prominent American politician whose career spanned the California State Assembly and the Los Angeles City Council. Serving from 1973 to 1985 in the Assembly and from 1985 to 1999 on the City Council. Alatori was the second Latino to hold a council seat in the 20th century. Renowned as one of the most influential Latino politicians in the state, he left a significant impact through his work as a lobbyist and legislator. Born in Boyle Heights, California, Alatori was the son of Joe, a repairman from El Paso, Texas, and Mary, a beautician from Arizona. Raised in East Los Angeles with his sister Cecilia, Alatori's political journey began early. He was actively involved in student government from junior high through high school, serving as student body president at Garfield High School. Inspired by John F. Kennedy's speech in 1960 and motivated by local Latino political campaigns, Alatori dedicated his life to public service and advocacy. Susan Diane Wojcicki, July 5, 1968 to August 9, 2024, was a distinguished American business executive best known for her tenure as the CEO of YouTube from 2014 to 2023. Her net worth was estimated at $765 million in 2022. Wojcicki's significant impact on the tech industry began in 1998 when she provided her garage for the startup Google, eventually becoming Google's first marketing manager. Her vision was instrumental in the $1.65 billion acquisition of YouTube in 2006, a deal she championed. Born in Santa Clara, California, Wojcicki was the daughter of journalist Esther Wojcicki and Stanford professor Stanley Wojcicki. Growing up in an intellectually stimulating environment, she had two notable sisters, Janet, a doctor of anthropology, and Anne, co-founder of 23andMe. Wojcicki graduated from Harvard with a degree in history and literature and later earned her MS in economics and MBA. Her leadership at YouTube cemented her legacy in the tech world. John Andrew McBride, August 14, 1943, to August 7, 2024, was a distinguished American naval officer, test pilot, and astronaut. Throughout his career with the United States Navy, 
McBride served as an aviator, fighter pilot, test pilot, and aeronautical engineer, retiring as a captain in 1989. His NASA career included piloting the STS-41G mission and he was slated to command the STS-61E mission, which was canceled after the Challenger disaster. Born in Charleston, West Virginia, McBride moved to Beckley in his youth, which he considered his hometown. He graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School in 1960 and earned a Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Engineering from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School in 1971. He also completed graduate work in human resource management at Pepperdine University. McBride's personal life included marriages to Brenda Lou Stewart and Sharon Lynn White, and he had three children, Richard, Melissa, and John. Soon Dao Lee, November 24, 1926 to August 4, 2024, was a pioneering Chinese-American physicist renowned for his work in particle physics and parity violation. As a professor emeritus at Columbia University, Lee significantly advanced the field from 1953 to 2012. In 1957, Lee won the Nobel Prize in Physics at 30, alongside Chen Ning Yang, for their research on parity violation in weak interactions, validated by Qi and Qi Wu's experiments. Lee remains the youngest Nobel laureate in the sciences since World War II and, after becoming a naturalized American in 1962, also the youngest American Nobel laureate. Li's early education in Shanghai and Jiangxi was disrupted by war, but he continued his studies at National Chekiang University and later at National Southwestern Associated University in Kunming, guided by Professor Wu Taiyu. Dwayne Julius Thomas, June 21, 1947 to August 4, 2024, was a distinguished American professional football player known for his role as a running back with the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins. Hailing from Dallas, Texas, Thomas excelled at Lincoln High School, showcasing his exceptional football talent early on. His impressive high school performance led him to West Texas State University, where he played fullback alongside Mercury Morris. Thomas's college career was notable for its achievements. After a modest start, he made a significant impact as a sophomore, leading the country with 7.2 yards per carry. His senior year saw him rushing for 1,072 yards and 10 touchdowns. By the end of his college career, he had accumulated 2,376 rushing yards from 396 carries, making him one of the top performers in the school's history. Thomas also participated in the coaches' All-America game in 1970, further showcasing his football prowess. His legacy in the sport is remembered for both his collegiate and professional accomplishments. Paul William Bucha, August 1, 1943, to July 31, 2024, was a Medal of Honor recipient and notable Vietnam War veteran. Born in Washington, D.C., to Croatian-American parents, he excelled in sports and academics, attending West Point and later earning an MBA from Stanford. Bucha's valor in Vietnam earned him the Medal of Honor for his extraordinary bravery. After leaving the Army, he worked for Ross Perot's Electronic Data Systems, where he helped rescue detained employees during the 1979 Iranian Revolution. Bucha then launched a successful real estate development firm, notably developing Port Liberté in New Jersey. He also served as chairman of Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel. Active in politics, Bucha was a foreign policy advisor for Barack Obama's 2008 campaign and ran for Congress in 1994. He was a board member for Veterans Advantage and lived in Ridgefield, Connecticut, with his second wife, Cynthia. Bucha passed away from Alzheimer's disease on July 31, 2024, just before his 81st birthday. William Darrow Bean, May 11, 1964 to August 6, 2024, was a distinguished American baseball player known for his time with the Detroit Tigers, Los Angeles Dodgers, and San Diego Padres. Bean also played for the Kintetsu Buffaloes in Japan's Nippon Professional Baseball in 1992. In July 2014, he made history as MLB's first ambassador for inclusion, later advancing to MLB's vice president and senior vice president for special projects. Born in Santa Ana, California, Bean's early life was shaped by family changes. His parents, Bill Bean and Linda Robertson, separated when he was an infant. Linda later married Ed Kovac, a police officer, and had a blended family of six children. Bean's upbringing in this supportive environment laid the foundation for his groundbreaking career in baseball and his influential role in promoting inclusion within the sport. 
Sylvester Stallone is one of the most iconic action stars in Hollywood, with a career spanning over five decades. Born on July 6, 1946 in New York City, Stallone faced numerous challenges early in his career, but his relentless drive and talent eventually led him to global stardom. His breakthrough came in 1976, when he wrote and starred in Rocky, a powerful story about an underdog boxer who gets a shot at the heavyweight title. Rocky became a cultural phenomenon, winning three Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and turning Stallone into a household name. The film's success spawned multiple sequels, solidifying Rocky Balboa as one of the most beloved characters in film history. In addition to Rocky, Stallone created another action-packed franchise, Rambo. The first installment, First Blood, 1982, introduced John Rambo, a troubled Vietnam War veteran trying to adapt to civilian life. The Rambo series turned Stallone into an international action star, and his portrayal of the tough yet vulnerable Rambo became emblematic of the era's action heroes. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Stallone starred in several hit films, including Cobra, Tango and Cash, and Demolition Man, each further cementing his place as an action movie legend. Beyond his on-screen performances, Stallone proved to be a talented screenwriter and director. He wrote and directed many of his own films, including several entries in the Rocky franchise. In the 2000s, he successfully revived his two most iconic roles with Rocky Balboa, 2006, and Rambo, 2008, both of which were well-received by fans and critics alike. More recently, Stallone found renewed success with The Expendables franchise, 2010, which brought together action stars from different generations, once again affirming his status as a major player in the genre. Even as he aged, Stallone continued to show his versatility as both an action star and dramatic actor. In 2015, he was widely praised for his role in Creed, reprising the character of Rocky Balboa, but this time as a mentor and trainer to Adonis Creed, the son of his former rival and friend, Apollo Creed. His performance earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, a testament to his enduring talent and relevance in Hollywood. Despite his ongoing success, Stallone recently found himself the subject of a disturbing social media hoax. Rumors circulated across various platforms that the beloved actor had passed away, causing widespread panic and sorrow among his fans. However, the entire story turned out to be a harmful death hoax. Stallone quickly took to social media to set the record straight, posting a video on Instagram where he appeared fit and healthy assuring his followers that he was very much alive. As of today, September 14th, 2024, Sylvester Stallone is alive and well. At 78 years old, he remains active in his career and continues to engage with his fans through social media. Despite the false reports, Stallone has proven once again that he is as resilient in real life as the characters he portrays on screen. His legacy as a Hollywood legend is undeniable, and his ability to bounce back from adversity, whether in his career or personal life, continues to inspire millions around the world.